Hey everyone, it's Tyler from Universal Rackets and this is going to be an amazing video. The reason why it's going to be an amazing video is because if you stay tuned, you will be twice as effective as you were before watching this video up at the kitchen. Once again, if you stay tuned for this whole video, you are going to be learning all my tips and all my tricks that will improve your game at the kitchen. Your opponents, they are going to be scared of you at the kitchen now after you're done with this video. So PS, do not share this with your opponents opponents, only share this with your friends. So let's get started. One more disclaimer. These are going to be tips that you have never heard of before, hopefully on YouTube or online. I'm going to be giving you guys different tips and different tricks than most instructors say. So yeah, okay, you wanna lean over. We're gonna start, you wanna lean over the kitchen line. Well, Tyler, you told me you're going to give me tips and tricks that other pickleball instructors don't say. Yeah, you're going to be leaning over the kitchen line, but not for the reason that you think. I want you to think, by leaning over the kitchen line, I can lean over the kitchen as long as I'm not in the kitchen, hitting the ball in the air, right? That's going to allow me to make contact more out in front. But also, by leaning over the kitchen and keeping my paddle out, that is going to minimize the kitchen space that my opponents see. So you are going to, while you're waiting up at the kitchen for a dink or a volley or whatever your opponent's going to do, instead of waiting like this, you are going to wait like this. If someone's going to hit, if I go like this and I hit the ball, I'm waiting out here instead of being in here. Think, I am shrinking the kitchen halfway now. My opponent is going to think twice when they're dinking the ball over the net. So by going like this to going like this, that is going to make you twice as effective at the kitchen with the tactic of minimizing the kitchen for your opponent. Also, once again, you're going to be able to take more balls out of air. You're going to be able to hit neutral or offensive instead of defensive. And that's another thing that I want to talk about as well. This is more of a strategy tip rather than a technical tip, but I want you to think that you're taking every single ball as early as possible. Once again, when you're up at the kitchen, I want this mentality that you're taking every single ball as early as possible. You're not letting that ball come to you. You are going to the ball. Pretend that ball is a million dollars, a billion dollars. Just grab the pickleball and you're good. You got it, right? You're not just going to wait here. You're going to go out to that ball. You're going to get it, right? I want you to try to make every single ball as early as possible. Now, okay, that's what everyone says. Yes, but here's why. By taking the ball earlier, that's going to allow you to take it as a higher point rather than if you let the ball come to you. I want you to think, a ball that I make contact out here is going to be maybe about this height. Notice, this height, I can hit down on the ball because my paddle is higher than the net. But now if I let the ball get closer, now it might be at this height. Now it's going to be way more difficult because my paddle, my contact is around the net. So now I have to hit up or I can get under the ball if I'm more advanced. So the earlier I hit, the higher I hit up, the more effective I am and the more offensive and aggressive I can be at the kitchen. Now, here's another tip that Hui, who I took a private lesson with, I actually took a semi-private lesson with my wife, this completely changed my game. This was a game changer. Honestly, I forget what we paid this guy for the lesson. It was an hour lesson, and he kind of looked at us like we were crazy. He was like, why were you guys taking a lesson? Because I want to learn new tips and new perspectives. However, this one tip, say if it was $100 for the lesson, Take my money right there. He earned his $100 from just telling me this one tip. And you guys, again, are gonna earn your watch time from this video by just this one tip if you were like me. Ready? Here's how he took my money. Just, I gave him my money just for his one tip. Everything else was okay, but this was, wow. He completely changed my game. When I dink, or I'm volleying, okay? I'm here and then I'm always in the middle. I'm here and then I'm always in the middle. What I want you to do to be able to explode, to get to more balls, instead of keeping your center of gravity in the middle, after you hit, I want you to end up on a side of your body. I don't want your weight to be in the center. I want your weight to either be on the right or on the left. So watch, if I go out to dink to the ball, this is what many players do, right? Including myself before he taught me this. I would go out here and I would just come back in the middle, okay? I would go here and then I would stay. Instead of me going out here and then going back, I'm gonna go out here and then I'm going to end up over here. Again, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to end up over here. 
or I'm going to go out here and I'm going to end up over here. Or I can go out here and then I could load on this outside leg. By finishing on an outside leg, regardless of which leg that you finish on, that's going to allow you, after I finish here, right, that's going to allow me to what? Push off this leg and explode forward. So me, what I used to do before, again, is I would just go here and then I would wait. Now, I'm either going here and then I'm pushing back, waiting here, or I'm going here, I'm covering the line, and then I'm going to go forward and go over. So by going on an outside leg, by keeping your weight distributed into one or the other leg while you're waiting or after your shot, that's going to take your game to the next level because now you're going to be able to explode to the next ball. Once again, if you can distribute your weight on your left or your right foot, so once I'm done, you're going to be able to explode forward, right? Here, maybe I'm, maybe I'm here, right? And then I end up on the outside foot, and now I can explode back. It's going to change the game. Now, the next thing that I am going to tell you, okay? The next thing is, I'm going to make sure that not only my hands and my paddles out in front, but I am leaning on my toes and getting more into my legs. Once again, I'm not only with my paddle out in front, I'm not only trying to make contact early out in front, I'm getting into my legs, dropping my center of gravity, and I'm leaning on my toes. Now, look, I'm able to get way out here rather than getting out here. So by going on your toes, by dropping your center of gravity, if you're six feet tall, I like to say I'm six feet, 5'11", I think, that's what I've been my whole life. Then I went to the doctors one time. The lady told me I was 6'2". She's like, Tyler, you're 6'2". I'm like, wait, are you sure? She's like, yeah, 6'2". I'm like, oh, sounds good. So I guess I'd say I'm 6'2 now. I'm still going with that lady. However, if you're 6'2", I want you to be 5'2". If you're 5'11", I want you to be 4'11". I want you to drop your center of gravity while you're at the kitchen so you can be more stable and you can make contact more out in front so you can extend more. The next thing that I want you to do, a lot of players, when someone speeds the ball up at them, okay, they are going to react to the ball. What I want you to do is instead of keeping your hands in here when someone speeds the ball up at you, I want you to keep your hands out here like we said before. Now, we're going to be going in a little bit more detail about this tip. Think, the ball comes fast at me, and how do you know that a ball is coming fast at you? Someone winds up, right? Well, probably you should move out of the way, but you know someone's driving at you. you, you know they have a good tendency. Maybe your opponent pops the ball up to your opponent, you know the ball's coming hard. When someone call, comes hard, I want you to keep your paddle out. The reason why is by going like this versus going like this is night or day. Players can't, can't hit fast balls because they're not waiting like this when someone speeds the ball up at them. If the ball comes fast, I don't have time to react to the shot, and that's where I go wrong every single time. Someone speeds up the ball to me, I'm trying to be here, but I'm maybe even over here. I'm not fully out and extended, so then I gotta go out to the ball, and then I end up popping it up or being inconsistent. Someone hits hard, boom, you're going to be right like that. Now, the next tip that's going to make you so much more effective at the kitchen is you're going to keep any ball or let any ball that is shoulder high, you are going to let the ball fly. The only time that you are not going to let the ball fly is when the ball is coming slow. Once again, if you are ever up at the kitchen and any ball comes near the money maker or at your shoulders, I want you to make sure that you let that ball go. Too many people, including myself, I take too many high balls that are going out, I play them, I go for them, okay? There was a study by this one pickleball pro I follow on Facebook, I forget what his name is. Honestly, I don't really like the guy in everything that he says, but this one thing completely changed my game is he said he did like a study or he was out on the court playing with people who were really aggressive and he said that he was going to let every single ball go. So if you're out on court with me and I'm this guy right now, I'm going to, if you're aggressive at me, I'm going to move out away every single time or I'm just not going to hit the ball. I'm not even gonna move out away, I'm just not gonna hit it, right? What he said is he said he won 70% of the points or maybe not 70% of points but he, no, I think he won or he said they missed 70% of the points. 
So the moral of the story, regardless of if that statistic is valid or maybe it's a little bit higher or lower, it's probably a little bit lower. But what I mean is if players go at you and they really bean the ball at you, half the time that ball is going to go out. And here's the thing, right? If you don't let the balls go out from the start of the game, your opponent's going to know that you take the bait. It's like you go fishing, right? And the fish, they take the bait. Well, you're gonna keep on using that bait. Just kidding, I play pickleball, I don't know how fish. However, that's what I think, right? Same thing here, right? So if you're driving to me, if John, Karen, Susie, whoever, if they're driving at me, hitting as hard as possible, right? And I'm taking the bait. I'm hitting every single ball going for, ah, oh, I can't believe I hit that. Ah, oh, I can't believe I touched that. Oh my God, I shall let it go out. What are you going to keep doing? What are they going to keep doing? They're going to keep on going at me super hard because they always know I'm going to take the bait. However, here's the thing. If John, Susie, Karen, Nancy, whoever, if they go and try to drill the ball at me and I go like this, not only I've tried to drill balls at people and people like do the matrix at the last minute, it is so depressing as that pickleballer being like, oh my God, I thought I got them and then they just did this cool thing and make me look like a fool. But they are going to think twice about when they drive the ball at you. If you can let your banger know that you are not going to go for their antics, that you are not going to take the bait, that you're going to let the ball go, they're going to think twice from an early time in the match about beaming the ball at you. So once again, if you're ever playing someone that hits super hard, a great hack and a great way to instantly make you more effective at the kitchen is if someone hits super hard at you, just let the ball go. Even if they hit the ball in, let the next one go. Because again, referring to that study, apparently more than half of the balls that bangers hit or people who hit super hard at you are going out. The next tip that's going to make you even better at the kitchen is that you are going to have your paddle follow the ball. A great thing that you must do at the kitchen if you wanna be twice as much effective, you want your paddle to follow the ball. So what I mean by that is if I go to the left, watch once I'm done. My paddle, pretend the tip of my paddle has a beam shining out of it. My beam is pointing to the left. If I go straight ahead and I dink or if I hit it, my paddle is going straight ahead. Wherever you go to, you wanna make sure that you point your paddle to. That's going to make you to what? So you go here and then I point my paddle here. Now look, I'm using the tip that uh, my, my uh, coach that I paid like $100 for, the $100 tip that I uh, was taught, right? Here we are, so I'm here, I'm leaning, and look, now I'm able to cover the middle if I go out wide. Because again, if I go to the left-hand side of the court, it's going to pull them out wide, my partner is going to have to cover down the line, I'm in the middle. If I go out to the right side of the court, here we are, I go out to the right side of the court, here we are, I'm here maybe, what? my partner is going to have to cover the middle and I'm going to have to cover the line. So by pointing your paddle towards the wherever you hit it, that's going to ensure that you're following the ball and that you're going to the middle. And speaking about going to the middle, you need to realize not only distributing your weight, but you have to realize that you have to get back into the middle. I am a guilty, guilty, guilty offender of this. And this is what I don't want you to do and what I'm learning as I get into more higher level pickleball not to do. Here we are. So I drill, I drill probably more than I play because me and my wife, we always play the pickle yogi. We're out here drilling all the time, right? So when we're drilling, we're dinking, we're doing cross court dinks. Here we are, we're here, here I'm using my tip, ending on this outside leg or maybe this inside leg and we're dinking, we're dinking, we're dinking, okay? You see that? Now, here's what happens, okay? I'm doing this when I play higher level games and here's what happens, okay? We're dinking, we're dinking. Say they're dinking, right? Then this person, what they're going to do, or if I'm dinking with the imaginary person over there, right? Here's what they're going to do. Dink, 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 pretend I'm over there. Here's what they're going to do. Wait, not that. They're going to do that. They're going to shoot up the middle. And not always this person is going to cover that ball if it's more over here. So what I mean is by dinking and drilling, you have no emphasis to get back into the middle of your court, right? And what happens is, again, I'm so used to drilling like this, when I play skinny singles, singles, or even doubles pickleball, I will leave this part of the court open because I drill on this side all the time. You need to make sure that after you're done, you use that pointing the paddle, you use that weight transfer to get back into the middle of your side. So again, it's not this, it's not here, stay. 
it's here, here, here. I point back, I'm ending on this outside leg, right? So then I can get back to the middle. By actively recovering in your dinking patterns, it is going to totally transform your game. Now, another great tip that's going to make you so much more effective, it's very simple. If the ball is high, your paddle's going to be tilted down. If the ball is low, your paddle's going to be faced up. And what I mean is I want you to think of the paddle face. If you ever have a higher ball, that means that your paddle is above the net. So if I hit forward on this ball with this paddle above the net, where's the ball going to go? It's going to go long every single time. Oh man, now I have to get that. However, if I can tilt the paddle downward now, that's going to force it to go down. If the ball's ever super low, if I just go like this and it's tilted down, it's going to go in the net. So if I open up my paddle face now when I swing, it's going to go above the net. So by really thinking about the height of the ball and adjusting your paddle, either tilting it down or opening it up, that's going to help you get the ball above or in the court, above the net or in the court. That is going to help you a ton as well. Now, one more tip that can work for anyone in any age, regardless of level, is what? Holding the paddle looser. In pickleball, to gain control, you have to give up control. Players, with their dinks, what they do is they go out, they try to dink, they try to hit super tight, they try to grip it. No, I want to make sure I hold that paddle super loose. By holding the paddle super loose, that's going to allow me to absorb the pace of the ball. By absorbing the pace of the ball, that's going to allow me to keep the ball in, rather than when I grip the paddle super tight, it's going to force it to pop the ball more up in the air. So by holding the paddle loose, you're going to be able to absorb the ball more, you're going to be able to reset the ball, you're going to be able to keep your dinks more shallow, and also, here's the last thing, again, this is what many coaches don't talk about, is not only you're going to be able to absorb the soft shots, you're going to be able to move your paddle, and that's going to allow you to get action on the ball. That's going to allow you to get under the ball. That's going to allow your paddle to accelerate so you can get topspin. A lot of players, the reason why players can only hit offensive balls here, and you'll see the higher level pros hit, the higher up in pickleball, the lower the offensive shot that pros can hit or that players can hit. So if you're a beginner player, maybe if the ball's super high, you smash it, right? Then when you get intermediate, maybe they smash it here. Now, here we are, when you get pro players, they can make aggressive shots from at or below the net. And the reason why is because they're able to get under the ball and flick it up. Again, they're able to not only get the paddle under, we'll do another video on this, but get your body under and flick the ball up over net. The only way that you can do so is by gripping your paddle loose. Because players grip their paddle tight, notice the paddle tip is facing up. Now I really can't get under the ball. So by loosening your paddle, that's going to allow you to be more aggressive, not only get your dinks more into the courts as well as your blocks and your resets. So I hope all these tips, it's getting a little bit dark now, I hope all these tips and tricks made you a better pickleball player today. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comments below. We are doing a uh, giveaway for the Selkirk Invicta Vanguard Control Pickleball Paddle. One lucky winner will be getting this pickleball paddle. I put the link in the description. Make sure to enter. If you guys love this video, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends. If you want any type of programming, corporate event, uh, pickleball or pickleball clinic, fundraising event, any type of event, it's been a long day. Been doing a ton of stuff. Make sure you fill out the form and Universal Records representative will get out to you. A lot of players, they want to become 5-0. Some want to go pro. I want to become the biggest pickleball entrepreneur in the whole wide world. So if you want to help me do that, click the links in my descriptions, share, subscribe, follow my wife, follow me, check out our newsletter. Have a good one. Happy hitting. And we will see you guys next time on court.